and welcome to Human Reproduction Lesson 1. This is on the menstrual cycle. If you haven't already, please can you pause the video and complete part 1 of the menstrual cycle activity. Okay, I'd like you to feel confident that you know and can understand the roles of the hormones in the female menstrual cycle and um, that you can then understand how the graph of the menstrual cycle uh, works and be able to explain it and also to apply your knowledge to exam questions. Just a little bit of recall uh, to remember here. So the first thing is that we've looked at this already last week, but please remember that when we were looking at um, eugenesis, we spoke about the development of follicles. Okay, and so here we've got a graphene follicle, which is a mature follicle. And on the outside of that graphene follicle, we've got a few cells. So we've got the thecal and also granulosa cells. Now these cells are really important because they release estrogen into the, the bloodstream. Okay, so the theca and granulosa cells are really important for the production of estrogen. Within the menstrual cycle, we've got um, sort of four kind of key stages. Please bear in mind that the menstrual cycle is about 28 days on average. So the first week of the menstrual cycle is the um, menstruation phase. So this is basically where um, a female would have their period and the endometrium is shed. The second week would be the follicular phase, and this is where the follicles um, start to mature. Then we have the ovulation phase, so that's where the dominant follicle will ovulate um, and the secondary oocyte will be released. And the luteal phase is where you've potentially got a good environment for implantation. Okay, so if fertilization has occurred um, in the fallopian tubes, then that blastocyst can implant into the endometrium. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that next lesson. So you were asked to complete this in your activity. Um, please do bear in mind that at the, this point in the session, you might feel a little bit unconfident about all of these hormones. Please don't worry. Um, just keep it as like a crib sheet for reference throughout the rest of the session. A couple of other things just to mention here as well is um, these structures. So please note that within the brain, you've got a structure called the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus monitors um, concentrations of hormones in the blood, and it also signals to the pituitary gland um, to release hormones, okay? So the hypothalamus really has two roles, um, hormones and regulation of hormones and homeostasis, okay? So we'll be talking about it in terms of hormones today. Please also note that we're gonna be talking about this hormone in a minute, a gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Now that is what the hypothalamus uses to signal to the pituitary gland to release FSH and LH. Okay. Please also note um, that as we said before, it's really important that we remember that the um, graphene follicle has a layer of follicular cells, the granulosa and thecal cells, that release estrogen, okay? So these are what are gonna be releasing estrogen during the menstrual cycle. Please pause the video and complete part two of your menstrual cycle activity. Okay, and we're gonna talk about um, how those hormones interact within the body. So we're going to start here um, with the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, first of all, is going to release GnRH, gonadotrophin releasing hormone, um, which is going to signal to the pituitary gland to release FSH. Now FSH is going to signal um, to the follicles to start to develop, hence follicle stimulating hormone. Uh, please bear in mind here that the video and also this slide are, are calling the oocytes eggs. Um, now for you guys, it's really important that you refer to them as secondary or primary oocytes, okay? So just be really careful um, with that. The follicles will develop, and as we said, um, the follicles are made up of a granulosa and also a, um, a thecal cell layer, and these are going to release estrogen. And the estrogen is going to signal back to the hypothalamus, which will monitor its concentrations and help the hypothalamus identify when to start releasing LH, or luteinizing hormone. And the estrogen is also going to signal to the uterus to cause the thickening of the endometrium. So estrogen is a building hormone. It helps build the endometrium and make it a thick layer 
potentially ready for implantation if, um, if a baby is going to be produced. The oestrogen that's been monitored by the hypothalamus then allows the hypothalamus to signal to the pituitary gland to release LH, okay, and you get a large concentration of this. We'll talk about that when we look at the graph later. LH, or luteinizing hormone, uh, causes ovulation. And so here, rather than egg, we'll call that a secondary oocyte. So here we've had ovulation and the secondary oocyte has been released and that would flow down the fallopian tubes and potentially in the fallopian tubes meet a sperm, a spermatozoa cell and potentially become fertilized. The corpus luteum, as you can see here, is the sort of remaining part of the follicle. So that will stay in the ovaries. And that's really important in this whole process because the corpus luteum releases progesterone. And progesterone is probably the most important hormone during pregnancy. Uh, progesterone is a maintenance hormone. So it maintains the endometrium. It keeps it really thick so that it can then supply enough nutrients um, to that growing and developing fetus. Um, estrogen is a building hormone. So estrogen builds the endometrium and progesterone maintains the thickness of that. The progesterone is also um, monitored by the hypothalamus and it has a negative feedback on FSH. And the reason is that you have lots of progesterone um, during pregnancy and that's because you don't want to be releasing, so it has a negative feedback because you don't want to be releasing FSH because you don't want any new follicles to develop because you're, you're uh, potentially growing a fetus. Okay, so please pause the video and complete part three of your menstrual cycle activity. Okay, and we're going to talk about a few key things in this graph, but you've just watched um, a video giving much more detail on this, so I'll just pick up on a few kind of key things. So the first thing, just to, again, we've sort of mentioned this before, but uh, the theca and granulosa cells, so these are the cells that secrete estrogen, and just a reminder that you can see those basically surrounding the follicle. Okay, um, so at the start of the menstrual cycle, we are going to have an increase in FSH, as we saw uh, the GnRH, so the gonadotrophin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, tells the pituitary gland to release FSH. The FSH signals to the fol follicular cells to start to grow and divide. And we know that the follicular cells are the theca and granulosa layer, and they release estrogen. So we can see here that we're starting to get an increase in the concentration of estrogen. Now, estrogen at this point is going to have a negative feedback on FSH and also LH. So if we have a look at the lines for FSH and LH, we can see that they sort of start to kind of decrease or remain quite low. And that's because the estrogen is having a negative feedback on those two hormones at this point. As the um, follicle develops, the estrogen released from that, that follicle will change and it will have a positive feedback. And it's going to cause a huge uh, release of LH. Okay, So later on, along here, we start to have positive feedback. So the estrogen causes lots of LH to be released and we get this big spike in LH. And you'll see that sits exactly where ovulation occurs. So luteinizing hormone causes the menstrual cycle to move into the luteal phase, hence it causes ovulation. Uh, the luteinizing hormone also has a, a bit of a positive feedback on the FSH. So you can see this little bump in the FSH here Okay, and that's because the luteinizing hormone is having a bit of positive feedback on it. Um, what happens next is that the corpus luteum starts to, to develop and the corpus luteum releases progesterone. So we can see that the progesterone concentration starts to increase. Now, because of the low levels of FSH and LH, um, after a certain period of time, the corpus luteum starts to degenerate, starts to break down, okay? And because that's releasing progesterone, the progesterone concentrations therefore start to also decrease. Now, if we just map this um, into looking at the endometrial layer, we can also see um, that progesterone is really important in terms of building. So progesterone, uh, sorry, uh, in terms of maintenance, progesterone is the maintenance hormone, 
Okay, so oestrogen builds the endometrium, progesterone maintains it, and we can see that it's reflected by the thickness of the endometrium down here. Okay. One of your questions was to describe what happened in the cycle if there's no implantation. So basically, if there's no embryo that's been or uh, fertilized, um, oos, fertilized ovum that then turns into an embryo, um, if there's none of that, then basically we're looking at this point here on the graph and we're going to have a decrease in the progesterone. Okay. Now, what that's going to mean is that the endometrium is shed and that's what's happening here. So we move into the period uh, or the menstrual phase of it. Um, and the estrogen is no longer inhibiting FSH either. So you're going to start to get follicular development. Okay, please go back to your activity and complete part four.